welcome back. We are privileged and honored to have with us today a new friend to the KUM studios, Mr. Jimmy Santiago Baca. He was a man who was incarcerated for drugs at a young age, where he learned to read and write, and then developed his own voice and his own prose, and became an award-winning poet and the author of 21 books and everything. So, Jimmy, welcome to the studio. Yours is an amazing tale. Also joining us is, of course, a, another friend of the KUM news team, Dr. Kimberly Killing from the Guam Humanities Council. But I guess the most obvious way to get into your remarkable life's journey is to tell it in your own words. So if you would honor with us well, that, sir. First of all, I, I want to thank the Guam Humanities Council because I keynoted a conference uh, a couple of years ago. And they were in the conference, and I couldn't, I couldn't imagine anybody being in New Mexico from Guam. And I said, I want to come, I want to come. And, uh, and, and I thought they had forgotten about me, but they hadn't. So thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> and another uh, incidental uh, story is when I got to the airport, I handed my passport to the gentleman, and he looked at it, and he said, no way. And I thought, oh, my God, I knew it wasn't going to go smooth. <laughs> and he said, no way. And I said, yeah, yeah, way. That's, that's me. No way. You're not Jimmy Santiago Baca. I said, I am. He says, dude, you wrote that movie, Blood In, Blood Out. I said, yeah, how'd you know that? That's long, that was a while back. And he said, he called everybody. He said, guys, come here. And I was standing there giving autographs when I arrived in Guam. I must tell you, Bl Blood In, Blood Out, otherwise known as Bound by Honor, Bound by Honor, is a phenomenal movie in this part of the world and everything. So it is a huge privilege. So there I was. Yeah, the, the, all of the characters, you know, uh, Miklo, all the characters in the movie yeah. and everything. Like, I've, I've got it on DVD. I've got it on, you know, Netflix. And yeah. I've, had, I've had it for years and everything. So, so it's, it's an incredible honor to meet you. Thank you. So uh, I ended up in prison when I was 18 for drug charges, marijuana, uh, uh, with aggravated circumstances and so on and so forth. But I, I was there, and I was illiterate. And rather than allow myself to go down the criminal path, which I had been living for many years, uh, I wanted to make an apology to my grandmother to say uh, how sorry I was for breaking her heart. Because it really was. She loved me and she believed in me and I broke her heart a thousand pieces. She worked hard in those fields. So I, I studied really, really hard to learn how to, how, to, how to get my grammar. And then I studied really, really hard to learn how to write a sentence. And when I did it, I wrote a letter to her and said, Grandma, I just want you to know I love you and I'm sorry for all of this. And that, of course, led to my notebooks. And my notebooks, of course, led to other convicts coming by the cell saying, hey, it's um, my daughter's birthday next week. I'll give you some cigarettes or coffee if you write a poem for her. And I said, all right. So I would write something, and the convict would say, wow, this is, this is phenomenal. So next thing you know, I had one of the biggest gangsters in the prison in Arizona come by and say, dude, why don't you submit some stuff to this magazine here? Turned out to be Mother Jones, an international uh, progressive magazine. Mm -hmm. I, I sent some poems there. They not only paid me $100 a poem, they published three of them, but they went ahead and a university came and, and said, we want to publish your book. And I thought, wow, for a kid who didn't know how to read and write, you want to publish a book of mine now? So I said, it's a great honor. So they published it and it won the award. And then I was nominated as one of the finest and brightest minds in America at that age. And when they invited me to New York to the Salmagundi Lounge to meet Norman Mailer and all the great writers, Wow. I told me, hey, you guys don't get it. I'm in prison. <laughs> I can't come. <laughs> well, that, well, that's some amazing company you kept at the time. You know? Oh, Denise Labertot was a phenomenal mentor of mine. She was the greatest poet in the world. And she's the one that said, you have a great gift. Don't, uh, don't lose it and don't abuse it. And, and you're, you're expressing yourself from a very pure place, too, because you, know, you, can, you, you create from aspects we were talking before the interview started. You, you either create beautiful poetry either from love or from hate and you know has that been cathartic to you to be able to express oh, yeah. yourself in that fashion yeah it's, it's phenomenal when you have the kind of upbringing that i had where where my parents were both murdered my brother was killed in a gang you know as a, as a drug addict and uh, my other brother's in prison my smaller brother and I, you li I live on the streets from the age of five and i'm institutionalized all the way to 29. i have never i've always been a ward of the state so you don't have a relationship with a woman. You never sit at a table and eat normally. You don't have a bedroom. You don't have any of the social etiquettes that normal people have. There's an awful lot of things that you have to learn. And I learned them through reading books, other people's cultures, mm -hmm. uh, European, Latin American, Scandinavian literature, uh, Polynesian, Caribbean. And, uh, and, and it's, it's, you know, some people mock you and humiliate you. Other people encourage you. And you take it all to your writing pad and you write about it. And then when I wrote about it, my, my work has been translated in 31 languages. I mean, I stopped over in Tokyo and called a friend of mine, who, a professor who had translated my work, and he was, he was delighted. He was on the verge of crying, Jimmy, Jimmy, why didn't you tell me? We could have brought you in to talk at the universities again and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, no, it's just been an amazing journey. This morning at the hotel, when I'm, I get up at four to meditate and stuff, I'm out in the whirlpool. All these guys are running and these women are running that work for the hotel to shake my hand. I'm like, this is crazy. I mean, this is, I mean what a gift to be yeah. able to wake up and have people appreciate you're your alive and well, you're that well. Is, that is also the island hospitality, which we are more than happy to share with you. Oh so God. we are happy to have you here Thank as you. our guest on our island. And again, the brains, behind, the brains and the heart behind Blood in, Blood out. You know, you're going to get a lot of handshakes and hugs and probably free meals for that here. And, and you really have to thank the Guam Humanities Council because they had the foresight, Kim and, and her crew at the, at the office, they had the foresight to, to not forget about me. And I, it, it's very rare that I, I overtly ask to come. Mm -hmm. I'm al almost always saying, no, I can't because I have to stay home and write. And in this case, I don't know why, the energy from the Guam representation in New Mexico at the time was such that I said, take me there. I want to go there. I want to meet the people there. Well, I don't know why. But may, may I bring in uh, Dr. Keeling? Well, really Dr. quick, Keeling. unfortunately, we've got to go to commercial in about oh, 20 sure, seconds. About I'm sorry. Um, where can people uh, see Mr. Baca's work and just, just learn from his extraordinary yes, life Well, experience? we have a week-long tour where we're going to be going to all the high schools on island as well as to the Department of Corrections, Department of Youth Affairs. We have a public lecture tomorrow at the University of Guam and the Fine Arts Theater beginning at 6 o'clock. And we invite everyone to join us. And we're actually going to preview an extended trailer of a film that's being made of Jimmy's memoir, A Place to Stand. Uh, we'll also have a book signing as well afterwards. And then we also have an event on Thursday evening at the Hyatt, an evening with the author. Um, it began again at 6 p.m. And we will be there because we will be honored once again to cover you and everything. Unfortunately, we've got to go to commercial break right now, but truly an honor. Mr. Thank Baca. you. Thanks very much. All right. Thank and you. And stay tuned because we will be back right after this.